Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of advanced WordPress theme development. In the previous video, we wrote two functions. One is add filter and delete. Second is delete filter, where we added an event that anytime the user clicks on the term checkbox, then add filter will be called and that data, which is the taxonomy name and the ID of that term will be added into the state, the stand store. Um, and then when they uncheck, it will be removed from the state using the delete filter. Now, when either of these functions are called, we also want to be able to fetch the results uh, by calling the REST API endpoint. So you want to be creating a get result function for that. Okay, so let's do that. So go back to our PR, copy the get result function and just paste it here get result function, paste it here. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. So inside of the get result function, which is not only being used in the delete filter function, add filter function, and also in the set state from URL. Okay, let's see what we're gonna do in that function. So first of all, we pull the data, which is REST API URL filters and page number from state. And we add these query params to the API URL using params equals whatever the filters were and also the page number. Then we construct the fetch URL. So we have the REST API URL which was available in the object that we created. Uh, so if you remember, we created the search setting object which had the REST API URL. So using that, uh, which was already in initialized into the state. Uh, if you remember, over here, when we call the initialize function, we <clears throat> set the value of REST API URL into the state. We're just pulling that up from the state. Okay. So we create an object for new URL search params and we call the two string method by passing the params. This is gonna give us the fetch URL, basically the REST API URL plus whatever the params are, query params are. We call the native JavaScript method called fetch by passing the fetch URL. When we get the response, we get the response JSON, then we get the response data, and then we get the result markup. So you have to create a function called get result markup. So in the response, we'll just get the posts basically. So let me just show that to you. I'm just gonna comment this out and I'll show you. Let's see if you refresh, and then if you click on adventure, take a look at the network tab you can see that there's a request that goes that contains your categories page number uh, category six page number one uh, category is the term name and the id is number six and the payload preview response so response preview we have the number of pages five post is these many posts basically and the post per page and total number of posts is 41. So that's the response we get from the REST API. And this is your REST API endpoint. If you take a look at the store, um, you'll see that, uh, okay, let me just console out the store for you. So if you go to update function and just console out the current state, then anytime the state changes, you know that subscribe method is listening to it, it'll get called and it'll call the update function eventually. So let me show you once again. So if I click on adventure, uh, you'll see that under filters, we have added the category as a term and the ID, which is six. If you add one more, again, state will get changed and you'll have, you'll have filters and you have six and three being added. So IDs for both have been added. Okay. So that's how the state is getting updated. And as you can see, the URL is also getting updated. Category now has six and two, uh, six and three as IDs and this will be your REST API URL. All right, and you also have the current selection. So current selection, uh, this this one got selected. So the category is the taxonomy name and the value of the ID of this one is three. So if you inspect element, you'll be able to see that that's the value, that's the ID. So take a look, we have a network request earlier only with this particular term, category six, but next time it had both six and three. So we got the response, we got the posts available here, and post per page and total posts, etc., and number of pages as well. So since we have this raw data, we want to be able to construct 
the result markup in a way that's more presentable to the user okay so for that we're going to create another function and we'll call it result markup get result markup and get load more result markup okay so let's do that I'll go over here so I'll go to helpers I'll put that function here so what this function is doing is basically getting the posts so the post that we received in response here these are the posts that we received right so we'll take that post and then loop through it and then just create the markup so we'll create section with an ID post ID and then header the image will be this so if it has post thumbnail and it's just going to create the image for that otherwise you'll use a default image so you can see that this is a thumbnail you already have an image markup here it's going to use that otherwise you'll use a default image so I'll put that inside a figure component we are using template literals here I'll keep uh, appending that to the existing markup um, that's why it's plus equal to in each iteration then you have the permalink um, you have the heading with the title you have the content so content, permalink, title, all of that. And then you also have a view more button, which will again take you to that single post page. Okay. So that's that's happening inside of get result markup. We also need the get load more result markup. So let's do that as well. So I'm going to put that here. So what's different here? Um, it's going to take the number of pages, current page number okay and if it's current page number is greater than the number of pages and just return otherwise you return the load more component uh, which is basically the, the button that contains your next page number information okay that's that's all that's happening with the get load more markup it's basically a load more button markup ideally okay let's pull that up so import it It'll automatically import it automatically import it on top okay now we call the set state uh, under which we set the loading to false result count to result response data dot total post result posts and result markup will be the result markup along with the load more markup okay and the number of pages will be response data dot number of pages so if you take a look we have the number of pages so that's what that is and the response we have the post per page and then we have total posts. So total posts is passed here. So all of that information will be set in the state. All right. So now what we want to do is if we open it, click adventure, you'll notice that we have the result markup, right? We have the result count. We have the page number, number of pages, loading is set to false. And then we also have the results posts. Okay. So that's all that is happening in the function, which is through here okay which is basically get results the get results also updates the state with all of that information next you want to do is we want to be able to since we have that information in the state all we have to do is just show that on the front end so how do we do that we go to the aquila results this one and inside of this just copy this paste it here we subscribe so any component can listen to the change in the store by subscribing to it using the subscribe function and then do its own thing so now you can see that things are independent each of these think of these each of these web components as separate components that are independent of each other yet there is a global store they can listen to one component can make change to the state of the store other components which are listening to it depending on the change in the store they can behave differently so Aquila results is the one where we want to put the results for all of these posts. So if you take a look at the element and if you look at the Aquila results, so this is your component where we want to add all of those posts. So all I want to do is inside of this component class, I listen to the store. Anytime there's a change in the state and it's as long as it's loading, we show the loading. Otherwise we show the markup. So because our, once the REST API call is made, 
the state is updated and that contains the markup. We can pull that information from the state and we can show that over here. So see, that's exactly what's happening here. We're saying this dot inner HTML, which means change the inner HTML inside content of this particular component and put the result markup from the state, grab the result markup from the state and put that here inside of this. So let's see if that happens. Refresh. So you can see that's exactly what's happening, right? You just put that there. Now, why did it happen on refresh is because we're doing the same thing on refresh also. If you notice, so get result, even on initialize, initialize function is called the first time the component loads because that information is in the URL, it pulls the information from the URL. So it has that information. It puts that in the state sets that so this gets it from the url so it gets the id from the url and the, depending on how many terms are there this function sets all the information in the state and this gets the result sets the markup in the state and because this component is already listening the one that we have result it takes that from the state and sets that as markup and notice that initially you have for a flash of second you have loading right it was saying that as long as it's loading, show loading, otherwise the markup. Does that make sense? Great. All right, so that's it for this video. You can see it looks pretty cool. And in the next video, we'll continue further. All right, so I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And I'm gonna see you in the next video. Thank you very much, bye-bye.